The SNP's leadership reckons it's come up with a new way to try and drive for another referendum on Scottish independence. The party's membership is going to be asked to back a plan to demand another vote if the SNP wins the most seats in Scotland at the next general election, not an outright majority, as had been the policy before. I've been speaking to the SNP's leader at Westminster, Stephen Flynn. Um, now, I want to talk to you about independence. Mm. Um, because, yep, I bet. <laughs> um, Hamza Youssef is setting out his plan to achieve Scottish independence. Now, right, he says that he's going to push for a second independence referendum if the SNP wins the most seats mm -hmm. at the next election. So not a majority, the most seats. Mm -hmm. is that, you, do you support that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we're operating on a first-past-the-post system. A general election of the Labour Party or the Conservative Party win the most seats and they have a mandate to implement their manifesto. Our manifesto is going to be very clear on page one, line one. It's going to say that a vote for the Scottish National Party is a vote for independence. And if we win a majority of seats, then we'll seek to give democratic effect to that. I think that's a, a proportionate thing to do, and I think it's something the Scottish public will support. So, putting aside the fact that, you know, people vote in general elections for lots of reasons, mm -hmm. cost of living crisis, uh, for example, uh, just to name one other issue that people might be voting on. So, firstly, you're arguing you want the election to be a mandate for an independence referendum, even if the majority of people vote against independence for parties who are anti-independence. <laughs> so we're going to be clear in our manifesto, which is the basis of which people vote for political parties, that a vote for the SNP is a vote for Scottish independence. Yeah, but It'll if be you don't us... get a majority, mm -hmm. if the majority of people in Scotland vote for parties that don't support independence, how is that a mandate for independence? Well, I, I, am I, sorry, am I missing something? No, here? no, no. What, what we're saying quite clearly is that in a Westminster context, it's done by proportionality of seats. So we're saying if we win a majority of seats, which I'm very confident that we will in the general election next year, then that'll be a mandate for us to give democratic effect to independence. You're not saying majority, you're, you're, you're saying the, the, the most seats, not a majority, isn't it? That's yes, really yeah, yeah of, uh, of course. Now, if the UK government wants to come to us and say, well, that's fine, you can have your independence in, I'd, I'd love that. What I would expect to happen is for them to come to the table to have that grown-up democratic discussion about how we empower the people of Scotland to determine their own future. Now, that may well be a transfer of powers from Westminster to Holyrood to hold an independence referendum. That may, may well be just agreeing to an independence referendum. But, you know, when it comes to this big constitutional issue, I think the question must be for the Labour Party and the Conservatives, at what point are they going to allow the people of Scotland to determine their own future? Well, probably not at the point where the majority of people in a general election vote against independence. Well, well I think... I would guess. Well, well, what we would be standing on is winning the majority of seats. And as I say, I'm very confident that we would do that and we would seek to give uh, implementation to our manifesto on that basis. But look, you mentioned the cost of living Alex, crisis. Alex uh, Salmon said, no one seriously believes that proposing a majority of seats as an independence mandate is at all credible. Well, I don't think Alex Salmon's necessarily in a place to talk about credibility at this moment in time. But look, you mentioned the cost of living crisis. The cost of living crisis is intrinsically linked to the why we need independence. Because if you look at energy bills where people are being squeezed, that's because of failed policy decisions at Westminster. If you look at mortgages, the reason that people with mortgage rates are going through the roof is because of failed decisions taken at Westminster. When we look at food prices, the reason food prices are so high is because we left the European Union. Decision taken at Westminster. The cost of living crisis isn't a reason not to talk about independence. It's a fundamental reason as to why Scotland should be independent. You've got a big test coming up with by-election. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling confident about that one? I think you're, you're always confident uh, going into by-elections, but it's a big unknown, isn't it? Now, two things are certain from this by-election. One, the Tories are going to get hammered, because that's, that's a given. But the second one is that either the SNP or the Labour Party are going to win. In 2015, the SNP won. In 2017, Labour won. In 2019, the SNP won. We're standing on a, a clear basis of making sure that Westminster takes action on that cost of living crisis. And, you know, Katie Loughton's the only candidate, the only candidate in this election who wants to do that, who wants to talk about the damage being caused by Brexit and who wants to give the people of Scotland the right to determine their own future. You, there was a story um, in the Scottish Sun on Sunday, I'm not sure if you've seen, uh, that you're having to pay people a daily rate to deliver leaflets in this constituency. One leafleter apparently said, I don't support the SNP, I'm just getting paid to hand this bleep out. Mm. I mean, it doesn't really sound like you're bursting with activists hammering on doors, does well, it? Well, I'm not revealing any secrets by saying I don't tend to, to read the, the Sun on Sunday. I think I think it was the, the paper you were mentioning there. But I'm aware of this 
story. As I understand it, those comments haven't been verified um, by anyone, uh, apart from those involved with that particular newspaper. But the, the point... But the, but the overall story has been verified, that you are paying it's, a daily rate. It, it's not uncommon for political parties to, to pay companies to distribute materials. But I've been there, I've been on the ground in Rutherglen, Glen, I've been delivering materials as well, I've been chaffing on those and the response we've had is very positive. OK, thank you very much.